All right, I think we're live. Awesome. Woo, hi everybody. Thanks for hanging out and waiting even though we're a couple minutes late because Mike couldn't get his act together. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. <laughs> I know, hilarious. All right. So, all right, I'm refreshing everything so I can see. So, should we just kick it off? You want to wait a couple of minutes to see if... Oh, my cousin Dina's here. Hi, Dina. Oh, she's related to you? Oh, God. Yeah, she's related to me. <laughs> Be nice to her. My nope. God. Nope. Be nice to her. Never. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have a little over... Oh, we just passed 40 people, so... All right, so should we just like you want to start talking? How was how was your sales this week, Mike? I think I already know the answer to this, but let's talk about it because uh, I'm sure there's some people that can relate to us right now. Yeah, they suck. They suck. <laughs> well, I mean, from December, I guess it's expected to be down, but uh, I'm down 22 percent overall. Um, I had a ten dollar day on Thursday. Uh, today's at 212, which isn't too bad. It's pretty good, I guess. And the other days were around 100. Uh, I had a $200 Tuesday, $100 Wednesday, which for me, comparably, is just not that good, um, especially since I have a decent amount of listings and I've been listing pretty well every day, you know, at least 20 something things a day. So I'm a little disappointed. $10 day, and it was just dead. You know, when you just look at your phone and it doesn't do anything all day. Uh, yeah, that was me. And then I got a cha-ching, and it was just like a bid for a dollar ninety-nine pair of jeans. So I wasn't too happy. So they suck. So I want you to talk about yours a little bit. Hopefully, better than mine. Um, my gross sales are not as high as yours, but I think kind of like since you're full time and I'm part time, I think we're both kind of down in the same way. Um, like one or two sales a day, three sales a day, four sales a day. I mean, I do videos about my sales, you know, during the week. So um, people kind of know, you know, how my sales are going, but I think comparably they're about the same as yours. Just awful, awful. Okay, well, well, in general, you know, your inventory sucks, so. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm joking, kind of. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is, there is a big difference, though. You know, you have over 800 active items, and I only have, you know, 370-something active items. So oh. the fact that our sales are so close is kind of pathetic. It is really pathetic. You're right. I'll give you that one. <laughs> um, but... That kind of segues into the next thing I want to talk about, which is you hired somebody, which you've been talking about on your videos. Yeah. And since you only have 300 something listings, like what are your goals now since you have an extra hand? Well, he and I met up, and yes, it's a man. I hired a man. We're good for something. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, he was he's not able to start until Monday, but he and I already um, we already met up and had a chat and we have a goal of 200 listings by the end of next week. It's not bad. So it's, you know, 40 to 50 a day, depending on if he does four days or five days starting Monday. Um, I went ahead and just said 50 a day for four days because Monday it's just kind of like training and doing a few pieces and everything just to kind of get the hang of it. And then on um, Tuesday, it's going to be like, here's the stuff, do it. And then he'll do that on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. The question I have is, is, <laughs> is yeah, you saw that. Um, yes, I saw that. <laughs> but, uh, so is he familiar at all with eBay? Like, has he done anything on eBay before? Um, no, 
no, he has not. Um, surprisingly enough, not many people around here did. Um, not one person that I interviewed had any experience with eBay. There was there was one gal I had talked to a little bit over Messenger, um, and she said that she used to sell on Etsy and she used to sell on eBay a little bit when her husband was deployed, but she dropped the ball and never sent me an official email or anything, so I never interviewed her. Right, like, but so her. okay, so um, how do you expect him to get to two hundred if he's never done anything on eBay before? Well, because it's not that hard. Well, you would expect that, but there's a lot of people in this world that you give them a simple task and they don't know what their elbow from their asshole, for lack of a better term. Well, so. okay, you see, here's, here's the thing. Okay, so I signed up for Ink Frog. I signed yes. up for Ink Frog, and I have, I have an outline of everything that he's going to do with the listings in Ink Frog. And when it comes down to it, half of the boxes are going to be left empty. It's just a bunch of hoopla that doesn't really need to be in there. So when it comes down to it, I really don't think it's going to be that hard for him to figure out what he needs to fill in. It's a matter of scrolling down the page and entering in the obvious things like brand and size and color and fabric content and then basically reusing the same uh, template and just changing measurements out and right. then saving it and saving right. it and that's it. Are you going to be doing the measurements or him? He's going to be doing the measurements but I don't have a lot of measurements in the listings. You know shirts I do chest and length and then jeans I do waist, inseam, and rise. So. You just hiccup. Huh? Yes, I you just hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hiccup. So. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not afraid that he's going to run off with inventory. Um, and if he does, I'm not planning to give him more than like $50 worth of inventory at a time. So, but I don't, it's just water. It's just water. <laughs> um, so I went with a new hire versus an intern because there's two reasons. I considered doing an intern. When it comes down to it, I don't want to, I didn't want to hire somebody or get an intern to teach them the business. I wanted them to do strictly a certain kind of data entry. And I feel like if I was going to get an intern, the whole reason why I would be getting an intern is to teach them the business. And number one, I don't want to give myself any more competition than I could already have since I'm in such a, you know, remote, uh, remote sourcing area. Um, and I, I wasn't looking to teach someone the business. I basically want someone to fill in some blank spaces in a listing and call it good. That's that's all I want someone to do. Um, and then the other reason why I didn't try to hire an intern over an employee was because I don't think that there was a pool big enough to find someone that would be willing to do the job for free. Right. Well, there's the question uh, Raffaella keeps asking is, why did you choose him over the other applicants? His availability was better. Um, most of the people that I interviewed um, already had jobs, and they wouldn't be able to work until 6 or 7 o'clock at night. And they were quite, um, what's the word? quite upfront with the idea that they wouldn't be able to work for more than a couple hours a night. And my goal was kind of to have them get it done during the day and then um, activate the listings at nighttime. So I would always be a day behind if they could only work at night. Um, and then I also needed somebody that lived close enough to me 
and there wasn't a whole lot of people that applied that lived because I live near a military base and a lot of the people that applied um, lived on post and I can't get on post. So I wouldn't be able to get my own merchandise from their house because I can't drive on post. So that was a big concerning factor as well. I needed someone that lives close to me and he happens to live like four streets away. It's kind of crazy. So. Yeah. yeah. So are you afraid that at some point he learns the process and he thinks, Oh, I can do this myself and he just quits. No, I don't think that'll happen. Why is that? Are you wanting me to sound mean right now, Mike? Is that what you're going for? Are you calling him stupid? <laughs> I'm not calling him stupid. <laughs> I'm calling... No. I'm saying that I feel like he's competent enough to do the job, but he doesn't really seem to have a passion to... Like, he, he was eager enough to want to do what I was asking him to do, but he wasn't so eager to be like, wow, this is a really interesting business. You know, can I can I do different aspects of it? He wasn't asking to do like different parts of it. He was more focused on give me the job that you want me to do and I will do a lot of it. You know, like I will, you know, if I get done with 50 listings, can I do more? Like that's the kind of eager that he was. You know, if you drop off 50 pieces to me and I get done with it really fast, can you bring me more? And so... It was it was more of that eagerness than the eagerness to like learn more about it. Right. So I'm not really I'm not really concerned with like him saying, Oh, I could do this myself and make more money or anything like that. And you said he's gonna work four to five days a week? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think two hundred is a little too much for the first week because you have to train him. So I'd be satisfied like 100 to 125 and then the next week possibly 200 and then grow from there because um, I have experimented in not really hiring somebody but having someone work for me meaning like a friend or a girlfriend at the time and with somebody who comes from almost clueless or has a little bit of knowledge to jumping into it it's it's hard for them like it's funny teaching someone how to measure the way you want them to measure is they're going to have mistakes because they're going to start getting a the rhythm. They're going to go to, they're going to start making a mistake and then they're going to keep doing that mistake until you catch it. Like, like the girl I was with was measuring the inseam wrong, which is funny, but I noticed she was doing that. I'm like, Whoa, this are way off. Like, how are you getting a 28 on a, on a, on a regular pair of jeans? And I, I noticed how she did it and I had to reteach her. So I think with him, you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have some growing pain. So 200, it would be nice, but I don't think it's going to happen. Just letting you know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So what, are, what is your plan since you're going to have a, an employee four to five days a week? How often are you going to source now? Oh, I'm going to source probably a lot more. Like how much? You go like once every couple, once every... I'm, I'm probably going to end up going to the outlet. I'm probably going to end up going to the outlet, uh, I would say, every other week. Maybe every... Woo, that's interesting for me. Um, may, maybe every three weeks, um, depending on how much stuff I can source from other avenues. Because I have, you know, I've decided that if I'm going to have somebody drafting listings for me, like kind of kind of what I envision happening, if I'm not able to go to the outlets more frequently than every three weeks, I'm kind of thinking that what I'll end up doing is like, you know, on a morning. Um, <laughs> on like at eight o'clock in the morning, I'll drop off Benjamin at his toddler program. I'll drop off, you know, so many pieces of merchandise at his house and then maybe I'll drive an hour to Topeka and source for a couple hours or I'll drive the other direction to Salina and source for a couple hours. So I'm thinking if I have someone drafting those listings for me during the daytime, that frees me up to travel around to do a little bit more sourcing. Right. So, I think 
But yeah, I think over time, once he really gets a grasp of it and he works out, yeah, it's going to be like it's just going to be like clockwork. You tell him a simple task and he's going to get it done while you can go list or you can even relax and work gets done and he earns his money. Like, that, I guess that's ultimately what you would want out of an employee. Um, that's what I'd want, anyways, even though I haven't hired anybody yet, which I should, seeing all, all the work that I do. Um, but glad, yeah, I'm glad you uh, you hire somebody. I really hope it works out for you. Is that negative? Is that too negative for people? I'm trying to be happy here, people. <laughs> <laughs> My guys, hold on. I feel like I need to say. I feel like I need to say something here. Mike is extremely supportive. Mike is Mike is a very nice <laughs> guy. <laughs> Don't you call me nice. <laughs> Mike is a very nice guy and he's very supportive of, you know, my ambitious. <laughs> he keeps me in check. Like, uh, he keeps me like grounded in reality a little bit. So yeah, 200 in the first week might be pushing it, but I have high hopes. It would be it would be awesome like out of the gate he just catches fire and he's really smart and he's quick and he just takes whatever you give him and runs with it that would be awesome you get more than 200 250 300 you never know um, but i hope it works out for you well i mean the thing of it is is he's so damn ambitious that and he really wants to make that money so I'm thinking, I'm hoping that he's just going to want to like fly through listings and be like, give me more, give me more. So. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I thought the topic for tonight, which I want to talk about anyways, and I haven't heard really any reseller have a show on it. So it gave me the idea is having a relationship while being a reseller. It could be marriage. It could be a casual relationship. Uh, you know, long term doesn't matter. Um, and how you deal with it? Do you have someone supportive in your life? Do you have somebody that doesn't pay attention, doesn't give a shit, uh, or do you have somebody just let you do your thing and they're supportive when they need to be? Um, so, what do you mean? His image is crap. Who are you talking about? Nobody. Oh God, I'm not even pay attention to you at this point. I'm just gonna talk. Yeah, you just talk. You just <laughs> talk. You're going to do it anyway, Mike. Just talk. All right. Anyways, so in my situation, I'm a single male, which is awesome most of the time. Um, I get to do what I want when I want, set my schedule. Uh, I don't have to worry about anybody telling me uh, no or being pessimistic about my uh, <laughs> my business. But um, I have been in relationships while I've been a reseller. And most of the time they're not supportive or they're borderline supportive. Um, I've had girlfriends go to the bins with me and help me out once or twice out of the dozens of times I've gone and then they'll lose interest or they don't. I've, I've dated girls that haven't really embraced it. They don't really get it. They think it's just, Oh, I work from home. I don't really do anything. And they expect me to be available at all hours when I'm, I'm busting my ass one night listing and they're like, Oh, come over. And I'm like, no, I can't. I'm working right now. And they think I'm just like ignoring them or something. Uh, so that really gets annoying. It's like, okay, so if I had a not regular nine to five and I said, I'm working, are you going to say, Hey, come over, you know, no, you wouldn't say that. So that can get annoying. Um, but I don't know. I think it would be, I'm kind of envious of seeing resellers on YouTube um, they have like a husband, wife team or girlfriend, boyfriend team where they're both into it the same amount and they both go sourcing. They both list, they both ship, they're both passionate. And it's like, wow, I wish I can find that. That would be completely awesome where you're both on the same page. Uh, but who knows? Maybe there's somebody out there and we pretty much know your story, but I'd like you to get your input on it. Uh, uh, say it. Just say it. Well, <laughs> well, the th the thing of it is, is I feel like if if you're gonna if you're going to be a reseller, this is just my opinion. If you're going to be a reseller and have a relationship, 
you either need to find someone that is just as into it as you are or someone that could that could care less and just leaves you alone yeah i know right i mean that's just kind of that's kind of how it has to be you know like people ask me all the time Lindy, does your husband help you? Does, you know, does your husband help you ship? Does your husband help you list? Does he, you know, does he help you out? And, you know, and the truth of the matter is no, not at all, because he doesn't, he doesn't have that passion for it like I do. You know, I can get excited and, and say, I found this for X amount and I flipped it for this amount. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And then, you know, that's, <laughs> You know, it's just, oh, well, that's neat, you know, but he doesn't, he doesn't get as excited as I do about it, you know, and he doesn't, he doesn't have the passion to like list and research and go sourcing. I mean, he like, he likes to go to Goodwill and stuff, you know, but he likes to look things, look for things that he wants or, you know, things like that. Um, but, you know, he's kind of willing for the most part to just kind of let me do my thing right. you know the the late nights are you know pretty stressful on on the marriage just because you know it's almost like we work separate shifts you know because he works during the day and i work after the kids go to bed and so i go to bed late a lot so i mean that's really it's it's really a strain but you know he has things that he does that keeps him busy so when i'm working it's just kind of like I'm in my own world and he's in his own world and it's just like that's just how it is. So it's it's almost like you have to have someone that cares about it as much as you do enough to help you and do it with you or someone that's just willing to just leave you alone and let you do your thing and not like harass you about all the work that you're doing. Yeah, I think it works out to where in my past relationship um, I would work a lot at night and she would do her own thing. I'd do my own thing. Like she'd like to watch TV at night and just go to bed and she wouldn't really bother me and I wouldn't bother her. So that worked out in that aspect for sure. Um, so I'm there with you, but I would rather have somebody more involved, like somebody who was willing to help out or even go, go Dutch on my, on my business and make it our business, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, of course that, I mean, that would be, that'd be nice. That's like having, you know, free help. But <laughs> so you know, do, do I wish that he enjoyed it as much as I do enough to help? Uh, of course I do, but he doesn't, I can't make him. Um, and the fact of the matter is he has a full-time job that takes a lot of his time and he has to travel for work and stuff too. So really it's kind of wrong of me to expect him to go to work all day and then spend his nights and, um, uh, his nights and weekends helping me out when he doesn't really feel it you know he doesn't really it's not his thing so. right yeah i guess <laughs> i guess this shows on my personality but it's like i procrastinate a lot so like i'll be in the middle of listing and i list a pair of jeans and all of a sudden i'm playing a video game or i'm on a mobile game or i'm texting people or i'm off on youtube and it'll be cool if like if somebody was interested as i am when they see over my shoulder i'm playing a game and they're like Mike, what the fuck are you doing? Like, put that down. Like, kind of yell at me, you know, like, and say, get on your shit, Mike. You know, and then and then start listening with me. Like, that would keep me so motivated. Yeah. Um, I guess that sounds like a mother doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want a second mother and a girlfriend. But, um, no, that'd be cool. You know, somebody keep me more motivated, I suppose. Anyway. Yeah. But really, really, we need to talk about the real reason why you wanted to have this discussion, Mike. And why is that? You need to find a chick. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, she, if a girl comes along, she comes along, but I'm definitely not looking to get tied down. <laughs> That's definitely not on the menu. It's awesome right. doing what you want when you want. When, right, Lindy? I mean... Right what? Right? Don't you understand that being married? What? Say say the first part again. I totally doing, doing what you want when you want. Well, yeah, of course that would be nice, but that would be nice. I can I can like I can just end this show right now and then just leave and and go get something to eat 
and nobody, I wouldn't have to hear anything from anybody except you. You'd yell at me. Yes, I, I, would. I would tell you to get your ass home and keep listing because your sales suck. They're okay today, all right? It's <laughs> rebounding from the $10 Thursday. Didn't you have a $0 day? That was that. like two days after Christmas. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't mention that at all. Well, the reason why I didn't mention it was because I still shipped out things that day because there was um, uh, there was stuff that had sold on best offer that was awaiting payment that ended up getting payments. So I still uh, I still had stuff to ship out every single day. There was just no new sales that day. Right. So you're you're justifying the zero dollar figure by saying you had to ship out stuff and people paid. I'm not justifying it. I'm saying that's why I didn't talk yes, about it. I'm going to argue with you just to argue. Are you going to check my numbers too, Mike? I am. I am checking your. I am. <laughs> I will make a blog post about it. You're gonna. Yeah, you're gonna fact check me. I am. I'm going to do it. And if you're off by a dollar, I am going to tell everybody to stop watching you. Yeah. See, Kathleen says that she's married and she still does what she wants. I still do what I want within reason. Within reason, yeah. Within reason. Like, oh, honey, I'm going to do the dishes tonight. And you're like, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, honey, I'm, I'm going to change the baby's diaper. I'm going to go diaper. out and do something after the kids are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you have kids, that's like a completely different, that's, that's a different animal. If you're just married then you're just married. But if there's kids, that's a different animal because it's not just about being married. It's about being a mom or a dad. It's completely different. All right. I have no idea what that would be like. Zero idea. And I don't want to know. So, uh, so you are a strong woman. I'll give you that. Having two kids. Yeah. The best uh, compliment you're getting from me. You want to talk about natural childbirth? <laughs> I don't think you're a woman enough to handle that, Lindy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> anyway. Oh, what? I saw someone asking in the chat a while ago if you were trying to uh, pick up girls in the chat. I did my best to not respond to that. But Am I trying to pick up girls in the chat? Had asked, and I, didn't, I didn't see if you commented in the chat about it, Mike, but someone asked, why are you single? Or how are you single? Yeah, somebody, I saw that, and I said, Pittsburgh women are weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, we're not going to get into my single life right now. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. That's why. Uh, so what What else is on the agenda today? Are we going to talk about food again? You want to talk about talk food about? every time. My God. Food is so good. Food is okay. what drives my life. I did have a question for you, though. I even pulled them out. <laughs> okay, you got questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question for you, Mike. Great. Okay, so it's kind of it's kind of an ongoing joke about how Lucky Brand Jeans keeps screwing me over, right? Okay. I wanted to ask you how, how uh, Lucky Brand Jeans are doing for you currently. I actually sold a pair of men's that were distressed, as in, like, the cuffs were messed up. And mm -hmm. I sold them for, like, what, 20 bucks, I think, plus shipping. So, and the women's, they're slow. Um, I got them up for, I think, 20 bucks, nineteen ninety nine plus shipping or best offer, and they're on sale for 10% off, and I haven't gotten any bites on it yet. So the men's do better than the women's, but... Eh, they're here and there. What about capris? Do you think capris move slower than uh, regular jeans? Depends on the season. Like right now, eh, they're kind of slow, but okay. Talk. Because what? because I because I grabbed these and they were only see they were only a dollar ninety five. They were a dollar ninety five. That's why I grabbed them. But they're twelves. They're twelves. That's good. They're twelves. That's so, great. I didn't know if you thought that 12s would sell better. I went ahead and bought them without consulting you first, even though, you know, um, Lucky Brand Jeans have been 
kind of my kryptonite. I went ahead and bought them anyway, but just because they're a size 12. Yeah, 1231. I'm sure it says 1231 on it, right? Yes. And um, yeah, they'll the, do really well. They're I'll the, put them up for Huh? I'll put them up for 20 and let them sit. They're the Lolita Capris. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. You should get, I'd say, 15 to 20 plus shipping eventually. Okay. Easy. And then um, I haven't looked this up yet. I figured that we would just, you know, have a chat. Do you sell Red Rivet? Red no. Rivet? God, no. No? I No. Why not? Or I've, is tried. It just I've tried, and they suck. Really? Okay, I well, I got, them, them, in, but I got oh, the style. Them. Yeah, the style looks nice for sure. Okay. I always sell the style over the brand. That's why I bought them, was because of this distressing. You see all that patchwork and stuff? Yeah, what size are they? They're a size five. Yeah, not too great. Yeah. Um, yeah but I, I was going to bought them because they were only $1.95. I would say I wouldn't emphasize red rivet at first. I would describe the jeans as in like patchwork distressed. Yeah. Um, and then put red rivet at the end of the title. Maybe like what sixteen ninety nine plus shipping or best offer, and just let them sit and see what happens, and then just go down from there if they don't sell. Yeah. Because I I've sold styles before with the crap brand, and they've done pretty well. So it's possible you get some. Uh, Get a yeah. bite on that. Well, and also because what I liked about them, uh, they're skinnies, of course. The skinnies are good, but they're distressed. But there's no, um, there's no skin exposure under the distressing. They're patched, so people can wear them in winter and not freeze their ass off. So I thought that was appealing. I think so. so. And then weren't we just talking about Gap jeans earlier? We were. Have you sold Gap leggings lately? Not lately, no. Okay, check these out. I'm kind of wondering if if they're going to get a good price or not. See the side of these leggings? Yeah, like a bling side glitter. Aren't those cool? I guess. I thought they were cool. <laughs> I thought they were cool and they're in really good shape. Sometimes leggings are like all torn up and chewed up but oh they were i thought they were cute but i thought it was funny yeah we were just talking about gap and then there was one more pair of gap that i just recently got this week let's see you just sold long and lean didn't you yeah i said i sold a long and lean size 8r which isn't anything special for what did i say 15 16 plus shipping yeah so you just never know when the right buyer comes along on those decent uh transactions yeah and then these these are curvy curvy boot cut what What's brand that? they're gap isn't that aren't those bigger what size they're, are they? size, they're a 10 tall well, that's a good size you'll probably get 20 plus yeah yeah awesome so I just wanted to bring out those Gap jeans because we were just talking about Gap earlier, and I did. I haven't showed anybody those. Those are like a little mini haul that I just kind of like grabbed this week. So right. I haven't sourced at all. I still have it. My goal is still there, not to source all month of still January. Giving away at your death piles. Yeah, they're not even death piles. They're just shit I've bought in the last month. So they're not really death piles. My death piles are the DVDs and CDs I haven't listed that I'm slowly getting into. Um, that some of them are selling. I sold a classical CD for seven fifty plus shipping, and I bought it for like a quarter, thirty cents. So, I mean, if you're gonna buy DVDs and CDs for cheap, I buy them at the bins for you know a quarter, thirty cents plus. Um, it's just list them like good till cancel and just forget about them. So they're just long. They're kind of like I look at it as passive income. It takes you like a minute to list it because you look up, you know the the UPC on the back and that comes up pre-filled information and that's it. Usually they have pictures included. So I just list that takes a minute, research the, what the solds are for a minute and list it. And I just let them sit in a box. It could be months. It could be a year before it sells, but it really doesn't matter to me. So yeah, I'm going, I guess what my goal, if I want to talk about serious goals for a minute, um, you're going to get serious. 
Yes. I'm going serious. Oh my God, I need a drink. Yeah, we already know that. Um, so I guess, I guess it's a New Year's resolution of sorts without really thinking about it as one is, uh, my credit for most of my life has sucked, absolutely sucked. And it's through irresponsibility or not giving a shit about my credit, which is really stupid. Um, so when I was 18, I got a credit card right out of high school and messed it up. And that's what sank my credit real quick. So anyways, so finally at 34, I decided I want to get my credit together. So, uh, a bunch of stuff dropped off my report recently and my credit score went up. I want to say 50, 75 points since I last checked it. It was in the mid 500s. So I was in the mid 600s, mm -hmm. uh, I believe. Um, so I just applied for a credit card. Now my goal is to get up to 750, then beyond that. So I want to get a new car this year. I want to remodel my place. I want to be more efficient in uh, my my inventory keeping. Um, and I have I have an idea in my head what I'm going to do to create more room in here and just have a nicer place and have a nicer car. Um, so that's what I want to do. And I'm taking the first steps to do that. I just applied for a credit card and got it, um, which I'm very surprised because before it's like when your credit's bad and you just expect the decline right away. I mean, a lot of us have been there and you're like, why am I even bothering? Or I have to get the, the worst APR and it came back and I got it accepted to a pretty decent card. So, you know, I'm taking positive steps for the first time in a long time when it comes to credit. Don't let the credit limit go to your head and get yourself in trouble. I was going to buy you a bunch of stuff, but forget it. No, not anymore. Ah, uh, you're going to take me shopping. I was going to take you shopping for, for personality. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> um, okay, Mike, I've seen a couple of questions. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Retro Divas asking about Heritage America. How much should she list to pair for? What's the brand again? Heritage America. I've never. Oh, I have never. I have never heard of that. All right, let me look it up real quick. I'll do it for you. Heritage America jeans. Oh wow, really? What? I'm looking at them. They're like a super distressed make like paint splatter dirt splatter camouflage oh yeah yeah I, and they're they're going for decent money are they pre-owned mine sharing with the group nope <laughs> um you're gonna keep it all to yourself no new with tags they're going between 45 and 60 free shipping um and men's i haven't i don't there's not too many uh, pre-owns here. They're mostly pre-owned. I see one for 20 free shipping. Wow, those are some nice jeans. I've never seen them before. They're like paint splattered up, man. They're, they're really distressed. I'll keep a lookout for them. Yeah, but you can get some good prices for them for sure. I'd look out for them. Hmm. Uh, and then there's a, question, there's a question about uh, being a top-rated seller asking if items will sell faster. Um, I don't know about selling faster, but I think that more of your items would have a better chance to sell. I think a lot of people are more comfortable with top rated sellers. Um, you know, top rated sellers, I believe get better search rankings. You get a little bit more of a discount on, um, priority mail. Um, being a top rated seller definitely doesn't hurt. Definitely doesn't hurt. What do you uh, think? It's a plus. Yeah, I mean, it's something you should attain just for the discounts. Um, but as for a buyer saying that, if you have like a ninety-nine point nine percent feedback or ninety-nine point seven or a hundred, which is awesome, obviously, and you're top rated, I think that gives a customer a ease, uh, a peace of mind when they're buying off you because they just automatically think they're going to be satisfied. They're going to get their stuff timely which hopefully that's what you'll do, get their stuff as described. But if you were like not top rated and you're only a regular 99 or a 98, maybe they think twice. Maybe they look at your profile and they see, oh, he had this many negatives or why isn't he a top rated at 
top rated seller. So yeah, it's definitely a positive. Some I always want to be. Sure. sure. What other questions? What other questions? That's what I'm looking at. Well, hurry it up. Okay. Well, Angel is saying seriously needs assistance. Have a piece made by an Indian designer, and she can't find anything on eBay about the designer. I don't even want to try to say the name. It's uh, J Y O T I. J Y O T I. Yes. And then last name is S A N C H D E V. You ever heard of it? No. I'm seeing a website called Geoti Apparels. Air establishing a database connection going to the site. That's great. Yeah, I don't I don't see much on it. Yeah, she's gonna have to do some research on this. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't see too much on it at all. Well, that might be a really obscure brand, at least on this part of the world. Like what kind of clothing item is it? What kind of clothing item is it, Angel? Tell us in the chat. All right, Kelsey is asking, what size are those Gap leggings? Oh, the Gap leggings that I had? Yes. I think they're a size two. Wow. Yeah, small. they're small size. Yeah. The, the waist size, size on that is. It's got to be like a 26. I would I would assume. Yeah, I think it's a twenty. Yeah, it said it says it's a twenty six, but it says it. It could be a twenty eight measure. It says it's a twenty six. <sighs> huh. All right. So, if you don't have any other questions, I'm gonna talk about what I ate today. So Four, fourteen, questions. fourteen and a half. So twenty nine inches. Yeah, that's crazy. A lot of the jeans, when you have like a 226 or a 427, there's a lot of times the waist size is bigger. Sometimes it's right on the money, but that's that's kind of rare. But it's usually like I'll have like a 27. It will be marked 27. It'll be a 31 measured. I'm like, what the hell, dude? You know? <laughs> um, she says that it looks like 100% silk and it's a shirt. And she can only find out information about dresses. It's a hundred silk shirt. I only find dresses. Yeah, I find, often find some obscure foreign brands in the hundred percent silk that I've never seen before, and I there's nothing on eBay about it. So I don't know. All right, I've got a question. What kind of car, Mike? I was, I was thinking about. Good answer. I was thinking about a Jeep Pioneer. I like the look of it, and for my business needs, I, I need the room. Um, so I'm definitely going to look at those. I don't know if I'll get a brand new car. I guess it depends on the deals out there, but it'll probably be within a few years, probably like a 15, maybe a 16, some with low mileage. Um, ooh, Jeep. Oh, here we go. What, do you want me to get a Volkswagen Bug? <laughs> like that's what she drive. <laughs> what? 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 That's what she, hey, that's what I'm saying. I, I know who I'm talking to here. Okay. Okay. You mean you're not talking to me anymore? No, I'm not. I was never talking to you. I was talking you to never talk. You never talked to me, Mike. Oh, here we go. Are we going to argue live on air? No, we'll say that for later. No, forget it. Uh-huh. I'm going out after this. I don't have time for this. I'm sure you will. You just go out. You, 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 you go. Don't don't list anything. Don't make any money. Just go out. Fine, I will. I'll go drinking. Right, go. I'll go to the strip club. I don't give a shit. Go. Fine. Like I care. I'm sure there are strippers out there that'll pay attention to me. I'm sure there will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways. Um so how long we've we been on? Not long enough. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh God, how much longer is this gonna go? Oh, We're I gotta gonna bid. go for like two hours. It's gonna be an all, all right. night thing. I just got a bid on something. So 
I want to talk about this brand. What did you ever come into contact with Denizen from Levi's? Is that a yes or a no? I think that's a, I think that's a yes. It's yes. It's the D. It's the spell it for me. D N I Z E N. Yes. Denizen from Levi's. I I come in contact with it a lot actually, but I don't always buy it. It depends on the size. Because I only, I usually only ever sell it in size 14 and up. Right. What about men's? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever seen it in men's. But yeah, I, don't I don't find men's jeans very often anyway. Right. I think and they're, they're okay. I think they're even slower sellers than Levi Strauss Signature. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but I, often I have to put it on low on auction to get rid of them, which sucks, especially women's. They don't sell really well in that brand at all. Um, I had a question. Let me look up. That was a good one. Now I'm forgetting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was it? Oh, the Big E jeans. Oh, um, yeah, no, I haven't gotten an offer. I got a question one night, and I was all excited because I finally got a question on it, and it was – can you help me identify my pair of jeans? And I, they're biggies and they were never worn. And I'm like, oh, why can't there be a question about my pair? So, no, I haven't gotten an offer. I haven't gotten a question. I got 13 watchers with about 500 plus views right now. Um, so I'm, I'm toying with the idea of moving at the auction really soon. Uh, I'm probably going to do it Thursday and end it on the following Sunday, do a 10-dayer. Uh Maybe started at like four ninety nine, and uh, if I get five hundred, I get five hundred because I paid like a dollar something for it. So, you know, I think four ninety nine is right, right where I'd be satisfied, even though I want more. So yeah, that's up with that. So, what was your biggest sale this week? It's all a blur. Uh, don't do that. Hold on. I'll okay. Fine. I'll pull up my spreadsheet. All right, do it. Okay, let me look. Okay. Um, I sold those, oh wait, this week. What day is it? Well, I mean, it was in the last, I guess it was in the last seven days. Um, I sold those size 24 short women's Levi's and made a little over 15 bucks on them. Right. Profit. And then... I sold that Reebok windbreaker, made almost $12 profit on it. I had a whole, I had a whole bunch of like five, eight, nine dollar profits. It was, there was nothing really super exciting. Yeah. Slow week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking through mine. There was really nothing special either. It's like 20 here, 15 here, 25 there. 10 here. Oh, I sold. They haven't paid yet, which is pissing me off. But I cannot pronounce this. But we all know this. If you watch Rake and Profit, if you ever have, you know this brand. It's Armenda Gildo Zegna. I think it's Yegna. I think it's pronounced. Yeah. The Z is silent. So it was a cashmere sweater, sweater without a size tag. It was like 2 or 3XL. It was really big. And it went to bid at $64. Um, and they haven't paid yet. And it's been since... It's been four days, which sucks. I also sold uh, Hermes tie. Uh, that went up for forty bucks. They haven't paid. Um, so I'm gonna have to send some reminders out here soon. But those are the two biggest ones. And yeah, like I said, they haven't paid, so not happy. Um, I did sell two pairs of Levi's Silver Tab men's baggies for I think twenty five a piece, and they were both distressed. Like the cuffs were worn pretty bad. Mm -hmm. so those were pretty good. Um, Levi's Silver Tab men's you should always look out for because uh, they don't make them anymore. I bought some Silver Tab men's shorts this last week or two. Yeah, they do okay. Um, they they don't do as well as the jeans. Um, why do some Levi pocket tabs only have an R on them, not Levi's? Because the thing with that is, every, every at the when they manufacture them, every ten pairs they do that. That's just their thing. They just mark it blank, 
with an R on it. Uh, that's it. So that's all it is to it. There's really nothing else special about it. There's not, there's, it's not going to get you any more money. It's just a thing that they do. That's all. Pink tag Levi's. No, that, that's not special. Because there's, there's um, on some women's and girls are pink. There's the, the default red. There's white tabs. There's silver tabs. I've seen, what are the other ones? I've seen black tabs. Um, it, it's just different styles have uh, different colors. That's all. Have some Levi, Levi corduroys. Only tag is a small white tag on back pocket. This is Levi's. Uh, what, what, chat's going too fast. Scoville zipper, vintage ideas on what to list it for. I would have to see it. It might not be vintage. Um, what you can do, Holly, is look at the inside tag. Is it made in USA? Is it made in Canada? Um, that will be an indicator of where how old it is. If it's 90s, 80s, 70s, 2000s, that I would have, I would go off on that. Um, that's the only way I would find out. Anything else you spotted, Lindy? Oh, oh hold on, the chat's moving. Again. <laughs> it's like the chat stops and then it like all starts. Is it just my refreshing? I guess. Um. Okay, I don't, I don't know if that question is for us or not. I don't know if it's for somebody. All right, I got one. Um, do you guys like the Jabod jeans, which are they're French, Marie Francois Jabod? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I really like those pair. Uh, they they're like baggy hip hop type jeans. Um, and I always sell them for decent money when I get them. Doesn't matter if they're distressed or not. It's like I put them in the boat with. They're like a less. They're like a poor man's version of diesel, as in, as in the selling point. They're popular, but not as popular as diesel. Like diesel always sells for good money, and then right below it, like its little brother Jerbod, which I always grab no matter what, and uh, and yeah, and they sell. Um, break in your credit card tonight, Mike. I didn't get it yet. It's in the mail, <laughs> so I can't break it in yet. What I'm gonna do is in the next coming months, I'm definitely buying new furniture. Uh, I'm finally going to get a bed, which is sad I don't have one. But You're going to get point. a bed? I'm getting a bed. You're going to stop I, sleeping on the couch and letting all of the couch dreams. is so comfortable. You have no idea how comfortable this couch is. You have no idea how comfortable a real bed is. I already know that. I've, sleeped, I've slept in a real bed. I haven't been raised by wolves, <laughs> for God's sakes. Um, all right, the way my living room is set up, in the corner is a little a mini walk-in closet, right? I'm not using it for anything. So I'm going to put my unlisted or listed inventory in there. I think this would keep me from sourcing too much because I have a, I'm going to put my unlisted stuff in there or I'll put my listed things in there and inventory it. And my unlisted stuff can go in bins in my closet in my bedroom. And so it's tucked away. It's behind a closet. You can't see it. So I have more room in here. And I'm gonna buy new furniture and buy a nice queen king size bed for my bedroom and uh, new, you know, couch uh, love seat set. So that's probably what I'm gonna do with my credit card. No um, wonder he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> There's no room. <laughs> well, it hasn't hurt me actually. So. Okay, we're not gonna talk about. Um. That. So. Um. Okay. Days. Global shipping. Do you need boxes on the USPS site? <clears throat> well, if you're referring to like the eBay global shipping program, no. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't do much international shipping, Mike. I don't know if you do too. Are there special international boxes that you can use for better rates or is there no international special boxes. I'm not even sure. Do you know? No, I don't think there's a specialty international box. I didn't I didn't think so either. Um I I thought maybe they would have something international with like a certain size box where maybe you get a certain rate. But I don't think so because it I think it varies so much from country to country. So, I don't think I don't think that there is one. You can use any box, any box. It doesn't have to be a special priority box. It can be 
a random box. It can be a priority mailbox. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about food. No, we're not going to talk about food. Not yet. Save that for no. the climax of the show. Don't, don't do that. Don't do what? People have questions, Mike. Then, an then say them. We will answer them. I'm trying to. You're trying to distract me. <laughs> um. Hey, what are the top... What are the top 10 genes that people should look out for, Mike? Give me your top 10. The top two is always the same. Um, Levi's American Eagle, one, two. Uh, then, then you could kind of change them out depending on the styles and the seasons. But um, I guess, it, oh, damn it. Uh, you know what's really making a comeback, and I need to address this, is uh, Aeropostale. Now, in my experience, I've hated Aeropostale with a passion. The shirts suck. The jeans suck. You got to get a good, you got to get a good size to sell them. And lately, it doesn't matter. It's like all my jeans from Aero are selling. And the reason I believe is a lot of the stores are closing. Um, one went out of biz, moved out of the mall around me. And then it had a big, you know, 90% off sale and I cleaned up. Um, but the one like that's 15 minutes from me that I always went to for their clearance shirts that cost like two ninety nine, that I loved. Uh, and they closed and moved out right after they remodeled the store. Like it was brand new and they closed it. And I heard another one was closing in the area. So I think a lot of them are closing. They're hard to find now. And a lot of people wear them because they were so cheap and they're kind of like American Eagles younger brother, you know, like they're not as good quality. They're not as expensive, but they're good clothes. Like, you know, teenager clothes in early twenties. And I guess I shouldn't be wearing them. I'm 34, but they fit nice. So yeah, I think people are looking for them now and they're going to eBay. And it's like, okay, this is where I'm going to get my arrow stuff now. Uh, so I'm getting a lot of bids, a lot of activity. Uh, and especially what you need to look out for the men's jeans. Um, they're like, I guess the models are like Essex uh, Slim Boot, I think it is, uh, Benton Boot Cut, and uh, there's some a few others. but And the women's are selling well, too, like the jagging. They have a jagging style. They have uh, skinnies. They have, you know, the normal American Eagle type. Um, so I guess just be on the lookout for those. Uh, I guess I got to come up with seven more. Diesels. True Religions, Rock Revival, Miss Me. I guess that's the common big name brands. Um, let me think. Let me think. Hollister does okay. J. Crew at times does well. Uh, Gap, we were just discussing that. I don't ever pass Gap up. Certain Old Navies do really well, um, and some don't. Uh, let me think. I have a whole pile of shit over here um all i see is levi's for god's sakes oh wrangler does well um the wrangler q baby jeans for women uh wrangler men's just regular straight leg doesn't matter relax fits do well uh yeah i like wrangler a lot lee's do decent uh chico's definitely um i always sell chico's not your daughter's jeans the bigger the better in those Aria is a good brand, in my opinion. Um, Amethyst is another one. Tommy Hilfiger, I do well. And I especially do well in the 90s Tommies and the early 2000s with the high waist. I sold some Tommy shorts, women's high waisted for 20 plus, 15 plus, plus shipping. Um, bullhead. I don't like bullhead. Um, even men's are kind of hard to move sometimes. Women's, I don't like at all. Difference between jeggings versus skinny. Okay, skinny is like holding your breath, and <laughs> jeggings is like putting a trash bag over your head and trying to breathe. Like that, <laughs> jeggings really grip you. I don't wear them, obviously, but <laughs> like some of them, like jeggings are some of them are. See, there's different type of jeggings. There's the one that are super, super stretch, which are 
like they have all different type of materials and they're like 70% cotton and a lot of spandex, a lot of modal or however you pronounce that. Um, crazy mater stretchy materials. And then there's the regular ones that kind of look like skinnies, but they're a little tighter. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think Ting put in best simple. Jeggings are like leggings, but made out of jeans. Yes, yeah. you're right. They're jean leggings. But I put it in <laughs> more graphic terms. Um, okay, here's here's a question that Megan had. Levi's and American Eagles with no bins. What's the max price you would pay for a pair? Probably a max of seven bucks. What? New, yeah, depending on the uh, the size and the style. I would say depending on what kind of profits you want to make. Yes. Because seven dollars, I would never pay seven dollars for those two brands. Never. No. No. If, if I got a pair of fourteen long jeggings in American Eagle, I'm paying seven all day because I could get twenty to thirty plus shipping. And okay, we'll see. Then this then this is kind of like its own topic of discussion because it's going to depend on the size, it's going to depend on the style. Like if it's like if it's American Eagle, if it's American Eagle and it is a size four boot cut American Eagle jeans, then I'm not paying more than two or three dollars. But if it's a size 14 short American Eagle and they're nicely distressed, then maybe I would pay five or six bucks for them. It just depends. It depends on the size. It depends on the style. I mean, it's just, but I would say to be safe, I would not pay more than $4 for a pair of jeans of those two brands to be safe. Yeah. But where I'm at, if I go to a regular Goodwill and it's not on sale, it's six ninety nine normally. So that's why I said seven. Well then buy a 50% off color. Well, what if they had a pair of 14, 16 in a really good style? So yes, I'm going to pay seven because I know I can flip it for three to four times my money. But three to four times your money. Yeah. Three, three to four times your money gross, but you will make like 50% profit. It's good enough for me. If I got 25 plus shipping, I say plus shipping because it's all I do. And I just want to let you know, because if I just say 25, you might think it's free shipping. It's not. But, okay, I paid seven, six ninety nine. I don't pay tax. So 25. And then after fees, um, say what it is, 20. After fees, 19. So that's almost three times. I'd do that in a second. I've done it, and I always will do it. I just have to have to get that style. It's not common for me to do that, but yeah, I'll do that. I think seven dollars is too much, unless you're positive the style, the size, and everything. Yeah, well, I'm positive I think, when I buy it, so I'm not taking a chance on seven bucks. I, I know that I'm going to make. Yes, but somebody is asking how much they should pay. They don't have your knowledge. They haven't sold 4,000 pairs of jeans this year. Well, actually, I, <laughs> I've i sold more than 4,000. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh well, her. Yeah. I mean, everybody, if you have a smartphone, just look it up. Like, if you're there and it's six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, just. I would say no more than $4 on those jeans. Okay. That's, not, that's fair, but if you see higher prices where you're at, just look it up and then say, oh, they're going for 20 to 30 and they've sold, there's like 300 souls in the last three months, then yeah, go for seven. It's just use your common sense. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be like me and just blindly go through seven bucks at a pair. Yes, you would. Okay, anyways. <laughs> My friend, my dearest friend, Carrie, who I haven't seen in forever, asked me. I got to look at it. It's a Levi question. Where is it? I saw it. I'm going up. Help me out here. I can't find it. Carrie? Carrie, yes. Her name is Carrie. Mm. 
<laughs> Ask it again, Carrie. I can't find it. But Kareem asked me a question I need to get to because this dude is going to kick my ass because I didn't ask it. I didn't answer it before. I'm at, I find Carrie, so I'm going to ask her. I'm going to answer it. What are the best, most profitable lead buys to pick up? Um, there's It's a two-part question because the most profitable ones are the true vintage ones, which you're never going to find. I found one once out of two and a half years sourcing. So um, it's the true vintage ones from like the World War II era. If you ever find those, you got you to gotta dive in the bin and cut somebody for it. Uh, literally cut someone. <laughs> um, those go for thousands potentially. Uh, but the next one are the, the Vin Levi's Vintage Collection, which are new, but they're remodeled after the vintage style. Like they have like the 1944 style. They have like the 1954s, the 1960s and, and all that. And those new, you can probably get two to 300 for them. Pre-owned, I sold a pair for 85. So... Those are the next ones up. And then, because they're, if you know anything about denim, they have a salvage denim, and that's what they are. They're a higher end denim. Um, and then I would say mm, the 501 button flies. Like, the, you'll, you'll get into like $40, $50 territory, $30 territory. And then, then there's a lot of common ones that just get bundled up from $15, 20 25 things like that. All right, I got to get it to Kareem's. I got to get to Man, it. You were talking right. so long, I started to just like zone out and not even listen to you anymore. Okay, nobody cares. <laughs> okay, um, okay, Mike, can you buy printer paper with your eBay store coupon? If it's not in the eBay supply store, then no, you can't. Unless they, I don't believe they sell paper. So I'm going to say it's a no, but I'm not saying 100% no, it's not in there. I always buy the, uh, the eBay, the tape, I always buy it every single time. And then whatever else I might need, I'll, I'll tag it in there with it because I get a $50 coupon. Wendy's falling asleep. Oh, poor baby. Mm, she has to take care of her kids. She falls asleep. She's worn out. Aww. At least this, I have a bed to sleep in. This is true. Yeah, but you have somebody else hogging the covers that probably steals it off you and they put their cold feet on you all night. I don't have to deal with that. Uh-oh, she put her head down. She knows it's true. <laughs> yeah, just... just, yes, yes. I do hurt your boot. <laughs> Shut the hell up, Mike. What are you eating? None of your damn business what I'm eating. This is what you do. You make me eat chocolate, you dick. Oh, oh we're getting personal now. Yes, it's your fault. But the bed is warm too. My couch is warm. Do you understand? Like, I am passionate about sleep, and if this didn't cut it, I would not be doing it. Okay, but you said you're buying new furniture. If your couch is so comfortable, why are you buying new furniture? Because it's old. Like this. Like I moved in here almost two years ago, which is crazy. I it seems so like last week, but um. Yeah, I've had it since then, and like I just need an upgrade. Like that's all. I'm gonna have the money, so I might as well. Oh God, you guys are talking shit, aren't you? Yes, Ting. I'm stress eating. Mike makes me stress eat. <laughs> um, where do you get your bubble mailers? I okay. I don't buy bubble mailers. No. I use I use padded flat rates. Those are about the only bubble mailers I use. I buy regular old poly envelopes or poly mailers and bubble wrap. Okay, where do you get it from? Where do I get which one from? All of it. <laughs> Dina. <laughs> Dina says, Mike, you seriously want me to punch you sometimes, and this is the first time I've watched you. I wish she would. Right here. Right here. Dina, right he, Dina he's into that. Don't even open that kind of <laughs> we don't need to. Uh, we don't need to turn him on during live TV, letting him think about that. A woman punching me directly in the face does not turn me on, okay? I'm not one of those guys. Anyways, I'll answer the question. Fine. Um, 
I haven't bought poly mailers in forever because I bought like a a crazy bundle. Uh, damn, what is that? It's on. They're on eBay. They also have their website. I can't remember what it is now. But I got a really good price, and I I don't use bubble mailers that much. Uh, and if I have the flat padded rate envelopes, I use those a lot. So I use only thing I use it is for like first class items like CDs, DVDs, video games. Um, and I I bought like a thousand lot or something. It was crazy, and I haven't gone through them yet. Um, so I can't remember. I don't have the answer. Yeah, I get my poly mailers on eBay. Um. And usually when I buy them, I buy like 200 for like $22 or something like that from, I believe it's Value Mailers is who I always get mine from. Yeah, 3RB is who I uh, buy them off of or used to. I'd probably do it through uh, the eBay store now because, um, you know, with the coupon, I could just get them for free if I ever need them again. Which I'm sure I will. <laughs> I saw a story about a dude who sold his childhood imaginary friend on eBay. <laughs> what kind of loyalty is that? He's been there since day one, and you're going to sell him away. They got a. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. And it, the picture is just of nothing. <laughs> Mike, you, you've got the show just for a second. Oh, she's leaving? Is she leaving? Yes. Yes. All right, it's my show. All right, well, we got to talk about people. Isn't she just the worst? Like, she is just literally the worst. Like, could you imagine just, like, sitting across from her having a conversation? This would be the worst. Like, that I would need to tell people how deeply in love with me you are. Yeah, okay. Like, if I wanted to commit suicide, I would do it. Okay, Wendy. So that's, let's not put that thought in my mind. Food, no food. No, we're going to talk about food, people. I went to Speedway, right? And I got... This is not food talk. They're saying food. They want to talk about food. <laughs> um, So I got two chicken bacon ranch wraps, which are really good. And I got... <laughs> and I got um, pepperoni rolls. Which are okay. They're all right. They weren't as good as last time, which I'm probably not going to eat them again. What's Speedway? It's like Sheets. It's it's a gas station convenience store. I fully endorse it. Fully endorse it. I love Thai food. I haven't had Thai food in forever. I used to get rice, tofu and rice with some type of sauce. I can't remember, and I can't remember what else came with it. It's been so long. Um... Usually the Thai food around here is in the more affluent neighborhoods, uh, and I don't live there, and I go there sometimes, but I made my first Goodwill Outlet trip. It was nutty. Those little bitches threatened to kick me out three times for trying to film it. Yeah, you cannot film in the outlet. Don't even try it. It ain't going to happen. It has something to do with they hire felons. It's something about that. Um, they don't want you filming it. Uh, they don't want them out there. But Thai food is awesome. It is. I need to... I need to get back to that. Does anybody eat kosher food? I want to. I want to know this. Probably no. Is this I'm... just because you're Jewish? Yes. Okay. I want. I want to know. Does anybody eat kosher shit? <laughs> Any other fellow Jews out there? Probably no. I'm vegan. Is that the same thing? You're not vegan. Shut up. <laughs> Someone has a question. Who has a question? I want to ask it. There's a question. Kosher salt. Hebrew National hot dogs. They don't really count. But <laughs> I'll, eat, I'll eat Hebrew National hot dogs. I don't even like all beef hot dogs like that. So uh, they're okay. Like growing up, I used to eat them. No, I have a lot of Jewish in-laws, and they don't. I'm 95% vegetarian. The 5% is when she says, she says, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care anymore. I'm eating meat. Lindy's vegan. No, Lindy is definitely not vegan. No, I am definitely not vegan. That was totally a joke. I would make a meal out of meat. Yes, Mike. I eat kosher. Dave. All right, Dave, what do you eat? Type it in. I want to see. Because if it compares with uh, my um, what my grandparents used to eat. Because they were, my grandmother was strictly, not really strictly kosher, but she would not keep ham in the house. She wouldn't keep pork. 
Um, and she would make uh, a lot of kosher meals, which I don't really eat anymore, which I kind of miss. Levi's Australian size 83 will they sell? Dude, I have no, I have never heard of that. 83, that's definitely a different size than I'm used to. Going on Grumpy's Israeli. Hmm, learn something new every day. I would be vegan, but I like bacon too much. Amen. Bacon is, oh, God. So good. How about your pepperoni rolls for kosher? <laughs> I kind of <laughs> doubt it. I didn't say, hey, I like the pepperoni kosher rolls, please. <laughs> Vegan's so overrated. I mean, I would never do it. I, I'm not going to speak for people that are. That's their prerogative. That's their lifestyle. But I could never. I love meat way too much. If I die of a heart attack at 45, that's on me. But, man, love it. Um, do you sell Urban Star jeans? I've actually never heard of Urban Star. Urban Star. Urban Star. Not Urban Up or Big Star. Urban Star. Never heard of them. Vegan pepperoni. Now um, all I see is all I see is bacon flying. That's like the only word I see flying in the chat right now is bacon. Oh, bacon. Oh, all right. Out outdoor okay. outdoor wrangler asks. If Wrangler is made in the USA, is it vintage? Yes. That's it's at least early nineties. It's like Levi's. If you see Levi's made in USA, it's early to mid at most nineties. So technically, twenty years is vintage. So yes, it's vintage. Especially like you really want to get the cowboy cut uh, Wranglers with the W's on the back pocket, and they say made in USA. I actually came in a. Last time I sourced, which was over a week ago, obviously, um, I got some vintage Wrangler bell bottoms, and I got two pairs of them. One of them is worth more than the other, and I got it up for like sixty, and it's distressed. And the other one's like thirty. Um, um, bacon scallops are everything. Uh, combining bacon with seafood is a good choice. Turkey bacon. Oh, I wanted to say, like, they're talking about vegans and, like, vegan, you know, meats and stuff like that, vegetarian meats. My cousin, um, she was vegetarian, and we used to – she cooked me some vegetarian chicken, and it tasted just like chicken. So I'm not against it. I mean, it's pretty good. I think I'm, like, way behind in the chat. What are FUBU plus size jeans with elastic on the back side of the jeans that knees called? I found it fins. I would just put call them back elastic. Like I've never seen FUBUs that were back elastic, but I guess they make them if you say so. Um, uh, yeah, if, I think FUBU can do pretty well. I've never sold those, obviously, so I can't say how much how much you're gonna get for it. Has anybody sold items on the app Mercari? I, I haven't. I haven't. I've looked at it, but I've never sold anything on there. What about you, Lindy? I'm saying I'm gonna think no. But so what? I'm sorry, I was refreshing the chat. Oh Jesus. Um have you ever sold a Mercari, the, the app? The reselling app. No, I've never looked at Mercari. You wouldn't. Okay, so uh we got 154 people watching, so this chat is going, and I cannot. <laughs> chat is going. Sorry, I had um, I had a visitor drop off the baby monitor into the office. Sorry. Aw. Mike, stop this idle talk. Let's talk about Lindy. Oh, God. Never mind. Where are the moderators when you need them? You can have your own live show about me, apparently. I blocked them. Anyways... Yeah, my yeah, for some reason, that. <laughs> my chat is really far behind, and I don't know why I refreshed it. Refuel jeans. That's I don't like refuel. I never buy them. They don't uh need more moderators. We got enough. We got me and uh, Grumpy. So matzo ball soup is the best. You damn right it is. My mom makes it still. Um, it's pretty damn good. I agree. Yeah, Lindy over there don't know about no matzo balls. No, no, no damn matzo balls. You don't know about gefilte fish. 
know nothing about gefilte fish. But I know about frijoles. You would. <laughs> do Rep Banana Republic jeans sell? Yeah, they do. Especially men's. Uh, they're they're kind of in the boat with Gap. Gap might do a little better, but they'll, they'll sell for sure. Mike, make more videos so we can see you more. Yeah, I should, shouldn't I, if I get off my ass. You keep saying that every single time. I know, but I never do. I know you never do. The only Mike? time you ever put out a new video is when I'm in it. This is not true. Okay, so <laughs> Mike Hebrew. I don't know Hebrew for anything. I mean, I, I'm Jewish by uh, culture, I guess. Um, I never learned Hebrew. I never went to Sunday school, Hebrew school. I never, I never had a, you know, a bar mitzvah. And we weren't really religious like that. Uh, it kind of ended when my grandparents passed, so. It's more so in culture. You should get off your ass, Mike. Why don't you type it out, Angel? You know, you, you censored ass, and we don't censor things around here. <laughs> Censoring? What? Uh, you try, but I don't. She might be afraid because we have moderators. No, she's... The people want to see you. Fine, whatever. You know... Jesus. I, I lofty expectations. Lofty. I can't live up to them. Why are you quiet? I'm gonna go off on my food rants again. Didn't you already? I'll do it again. Mm. Oh, you know what we need to discuss? What? Um that's right. This is rated TVMA. Feel like you want to say whatever you want in the chat. Um, except don't get disgusting. Otherwise, moderators will block you. <laughs> um, any, anyway, so if any of you guys were not in the chat or saw our video on Mike's channel last week, Mike and I had a couple of video ideas. And um, they're going to be on Mike's channel, but we need to figure out when we're going to do them. Um, okay. So, Mike, we need to we need to figure out when we're going because I, I assume we're approaching the end of the show because it's been almost an hour and a half. That's your your channel. I got nothing to do. So, so you got nothing to do. You don't have listing to do. You always say you need a list. Oh, I got a best offer. <laughs> Oh, Yay! wow. It's a new uh, Conversations on the PMP exam, 5th edition, 6th audio set for 15 bucks. Woo! Yeah, I bought it for like 30 cents. Okay, anyways. Anyway, so... Okay, one idea I am like absolutely in love with, and the other one just seems like it's fun. But we had talked about um, one of the next shows. I don't know which one, but um, Mike and I were talking about live streaming with you guys while he listed and I listed, and we took shots in between each listing to see basically who could hold their shit together the best. <laughs> so... Uh, that was an idea. Of course, that would be on Mike's channel. That wouldn't be on my channel. <laughs> or what will we take shots of, though? I don't know. But that would be fun. That would be interesting. People would get to know us a little bit better, I think, if we did that. Um, that would be fun. I agree. Um... And then the other, and then the other idea that I had, it's okay to talk about because I don't think Casey's going to watch this, but, um, we had the idea to go live when Casey goes live and Mike and I would live stream, um, while Casey is live streaming and we would take shots every time Casey said or did certain things. <laughs> 
You just want to make fun of him. No, it's not about making fun of him. It's about making him a game. <laughs> because we're always because see here's the thing. We're always in the uh we're always in the chat anyway. So we might as well like live stream while we're in the chat and taking shots. <laughs> hey, I think it would be hilarious. I think you just want to get drunk. Uh, I don't need that to do that. I could do that anytime. You just want to make it fun. I just think it would be hilarious. All right. If he says I ate shot, yeah, no shit. I'd be in the, <laughs> I'd be in the tank. Everybody talks about I'm, his I ate, uh, we'll take a shot. Somebody in the we'll Twitch chat just needs to ask him like about his I ate, and it'll be over. <laughs> we need, like oh, come up with like, <laughs> like three to five uh, different uh, mannerisms or key phrases or something. And um, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure he would figure it out halfway through, but God, it would be funny. Yeah, it would be. It All would right. be hilarious. I, I am a, a fan of listing and then taking a shot right after each listing. Yeah, uh, that's, the one, that's the one you want to do because it involves work, but. What? You would you would put up some messed up listings. Right? I was gonna say I might really screw up some listings. I've never drank alcohol while listing. Yeah, I've seen fireball. I, I mentioned Jaeger bombs. Um, I got there's all types of bombs like grape bombs, cherry bombs, shit like that. Uh, but yeah, give me some ideas of some shots I should grab because uh, everybody says fireball. That is so common now. Like every time I go to the bar, we get fireballs. Oh, it burns so good, does it? No. Nah. Oh, God. Like, after you did, like, I was, all right, here's my New Year's Eve. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> so we get to the bar. They had $60 all you can drink. So we get there around, like, 8.30, 8 o'clock. Um, you pay the 60 cover, and they had food, too, so I was picking out a little bit. Um, we... I get two shots of fireball straight up, right, right away. Then I get a third, and then I get a Jaeger bomb, and then I get another fireball, and then I got something else. And I try to have another one after that, and it's like eleven, and I couldn't even drink it. Like I was hammered. Like so, I can only imagine this listing challenge after I get like six, seven deep. Oh yes, uh, rum chata. I only oh. drink early beer. Yeah, so do I. Oh. Fireball and chocolate milk. Oh, my God. Really? Kareem, we should get drunk before we start listing? Oh, I don't know about that. No, it's funnier if you see the the transition the from stain to drunk. The sober to the end. <laughs> I drank a shot of Everclear on a dare when I was 16. I felt like I, I never took an Everclear shot. The best I've done was... I took back-to-back -back 151 shots straight up on one of my birthdays. And about 10 minutes after I did that, we tried to walk out of the bar. I was so fucked up. <laughs> I think I drank some beers before that, too. So I was a little tipsy. And, Mike, you probably drink apple teenies. I'll drink some apple teenies. Just watch. I don't give a shit. I'll drink some apple teenies live on show. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have an actual question. Okay, let's ask, answer the actual, actual question. Uh, explain how to determine the wash of a gene. Okay. Um, the distressed look is obviously, that's, that's kind of obvious. When you see, you know, there's holes or there's fading, intended fading, the sandblasted look, which is like it's a normal pair of jeans and then down the legs are, is the lighter distressed spots where it's faded. That's, that's sandblasted. Um, and then there's indigo wash, which is, it's a rewash. It's like, I need to, let me look. Yeah. These are a personal pair of mine. These are luckies. I don't know with the camera and the lighting, if you can see it. It's, it's, it's like, it's a distressed indigo wash where it looks like the denim has like little white specks in it. That's what indigo is. Um, so that's how I determine it. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, there's other washes too. There's like light wash, which is obviously that's, and there's medium and dark. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, yeah, that's how. That's what I know. Or maybe I'm missing some. I mean, there's raw denim too that have never been washed. Like it's, it's stiff denim. Uh, you have to look. I looked that up on Google and I take it from me. There's selvage denim. Like there's other washes too that you can look up yourself that I'm not that familiar with. Well, I think I think that the basic ones. I mean, oh, the acid stone washed. Forgot those. Yeah, I was gonna say acid wash. I mean, you pretty much know what acid wash looks like. It looks like. It There's basically looks like the jeans are bleached out, mm -hmm. more or less. And then there's light wash, which is really, really light. Medium wash, that's, you know, medium. And then dark wash, which is dark. There's also black washes and, like, charcoal washes. Right. And then um, distressed, which is, you know, holes and stains and rips and whatever. And then sandblasted, which is... It's like that lighter fading. And then um, I usually always um, say sandblasted is also like when you, it, it looks like you basically rubbed them in the dirt and there's like brown on them. Sandblasting. I mean, it's blasting. Yeah. And then those are the basic ones, really. There's gotcha. like, what, six? There's like six ones that are like, big ones. I'm glad you can answer something I already answered. You went into way too much freaking detail. Oh, so I want to satisfy these people. I have, never, I have never ever used the term indigo wash. You know, that's pretty popular. A lot of men especially look for indigo. Oh, well, uh, I've never had indigo in my listing and all my jeans. And that's why you suck. Uh, amateur hour over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear, dear. oh look at me. Oh. <laughs> God, you're an asshole. Thank you. Have anything else to say? Not to you. Let's see Thanks. what else is going on in the chat. <laughs> now, how do I go about getting? Oh, never mind. You already answered that. See, I'm gonna talk about food again, Wendy. No, shut up about food. You're you gonna make me want to eat. You hate talking about food. You don't like anything anymore. <laughs> what happened to us? <laughs> What happened? What happened? It started off really good. Chinese food. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Chinese buffets. Oh, That's Lord. Weird. You list while the game is on. Tomorrow, I'm definitely not listing when the game is on. I'm going out. Um, I'm going to the casino. I'm going to Rivers. If you know Pittsburgh, uh, the, the casino is right next to the stadium. Um, so I'm going to hang out there and watch the game. Uh yeah so but sometimes i'll stay home and yeah, i'll list during the game i'll just relax and watch it uh but sometimes i'll list while football's on for sure and then i'll keep me distracted you got something to say or are we gonna end this show because you're I'm yawning. yawning i'm yawning because you're boring me i am i don't care look do something useful grab a vacuum and clean okay <laughs> do what you do best <laughs> You're so funny. I don't uh, care. You can't even do that right. You can't even do that right. What's a vacuum? What's your vacuum? Okay. Oh, who is older? We got a question. Who is older? I'm sure most people know this. I mean, old man, spring chicken. Look, you're. See, you've been worn down by family life, and I'm 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 the spring chicken here. I'm, I'm I might be 34 and older than you, but I still have my youth. I still get comments like, "Wow, Mike, you look like you're in your mid 20s," and people are you like, "Oh, where's your granddaughter?" That's what they say to you. Granddaughter. 
Yep. That's how old you look, woman. Uh. <laughs> no, you look young. I'm just fucking with you. Um, yeah, you look young. You're fine. But I'm older. I'm like ten years older than her, even though I don't act it at all. I'm I, I wish I had a Roomba. I want a Roomba, but there's too much crap all over my floor. A Roomba wouldn't know what the hell to do. Anyways, where's the show going? Where is it going? Are we just going to sit here? Obviously, it's going in the freaking toilet. Yeah, look oh. what you've done. Look what you've done. What have you done to your channel? I don't know. I had your you. Your stuff count has gone down. Going down the pooper. It is. Um, can anyone sell food on eBay or do you have to have special permission? Anybody can sell food on eBay. Anybody. Um, you just have to, the guidelines for eBay state that the buyer must, there must be a clear expiration date specified in the listing. The item must arrive to the buyer by the time the expiration date passes. And you have to basically click OK on a little box that says that you will store the item in a safe environment until it's shipped away. Hmm. Hey, should we have an after party? Like invite some people into a hangout and just shoot the shit? You have time for that? That could get dangerous. Could <laughs> <laughs> it get dangerous? I guess we could. Why is there someone you have in mind? That everybody's get, we're gonna we'll have like fifty people <laughs> in a hangout. Oh, we can. There's a cap on it. Like you invite a certain amount of people, and that's all you can do. Oh, that'd be fun. All right. Well, whoever, I don't know how long it's going to go on for, but whoever wants to get in a hangout with us, say so, and we'll do it. I know Raphael is joining. By the way, I got to plug it. Okay. Mallory in the chat. It looks like me and her are going to do a show soon. Just a one-time thing. I want to introduce her because she seems like a cool chick. She's a reseller. And I saw some of her videos, and she's really bubbly. And I think it would be an interesting show. So that's coming up soon. Me and her are going to talk. We're going to set up something. See what happens. I don't know. I think it would be entertaining. And if you guys want me to put out content, that's one thing I can do. Other than me, talk about the normal shit that eBay people talk about. Listing this, selling this, brands this. It's, it's you know, we got to mix it up a little bit. I'll let the Casey's of the world and the Coles of the world handle all that. That all the, what everybody else wants to see and gets the big sub count. And I'll be the guy at 1,000 subs talking about food. <laughs> so um, what I understood from all that, Mike, is that you're cheating on me? Yes. I'm blatantly telling you. And guess what? You're not going anywhere. Look at your face. Look at your face. <laughs> they can't see me. Yeah, the, your nostrils flared. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so uh, why don't we um, wrap this up and get this after show going? Unless we have questions. We have real questions. Mike, talk about life, Trump, Obama, anything, I'm good with that. <laughs> that would be interesting. I got opinions, people. But I might say in them right now. But maybe by myself, just talk about commentary, I will. Um, but, yeah. So, are we going to do this after show? Or are we how how are we determining who's coming? Because I don't want to, like, leave people out. I will feel bad. Well, you can't invite the whole world. I'm sorry. I know. Well, whoever wants to come in, we invite them, and, you know, we shoot the shit. As long as you have your own video, like, and at least, okay, we invite people to have just audio, as long as they're interesting. I don't know. Hey, you're running the show. This is your hangout. But, okay, oh, hold on. 
I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. So I don't even, okay. Well, that means I guess I would have to like start sending the link out to people. Um, okay. So my Q pick, I don't know. I'm going to go over here. You make note or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, Shut the hell up. Jesus. <laughs> God, There's you're a, always I definitely bitching. saw that one. In. I think Angel's one of them. Everybody is about ready to uh, realize that you know you just like bitch Lord all the time. Is one of them. Yeah, right now, say if you want in. Say you want in, and she will. Why don't you just put it in the chat? If I no, you can't put links in the chat. I won't let you. Okay, then Cherie's one of them. Henry. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This, Raphael this, is definitely one of them. This one is what people. this is what I am doing. I'm putting my email in the chat. How many people Tank can you have? Time. How many people can you have in a hangout? I'm not sure. Um, um, at least eight to ten, I would say. Okay, so probably eight people in addition to us. I'm putting my email in the chat. And I'll just pick the first eight people that email me. Yes. All right, here we go. There it is. So the first eight people. And I am so sorry if you're not one of the first eight. Maybe we'll do this again if it works out well. Mm hmm. Okay. So let's wrap this show up. Okay. Sign All right, off. you guys. The yep. email... My email is in the chat. The first eight people that send me an email, I will email you the link to the Hangout with Mike and I, and we'll just kind of, I guess, shoot the shit for maybe another 30, 45 minutes or something like that. So, And if it works out and it's super fun, then uh, we'll do it again. But um, if you're not one of the first eight, I'm sorry, I wish that I could like have all of you guys come. That would be, that would be insane. But if it works out, then we'll do it again. So, okay, you guys. All right, well, you know, we had like over 150 people watching for a while. That was amazing. Thank you guys so much for spending, you know, a little over an hour and 45 minutes with us. It's awesome. So thank you guys. Next week, we'll be over on Mike's channel. So if you haven't subscribed to Mike, go, oh, there was a cough. Uh, go to Pittsburgh Mike's channel and subscribe, and we will be on his channel live next Saturday. Anything you want to say for yourself, Mike? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, well, guys, for watching. Well, thanks, Dina, for showing up. I'm sure she's yes. a great family thanks. member. Say yes. goodbye to her. Say Bye. goodbye to Dina. Too. <laughs> okay. All right. Sign off. For All right. Bye, guys.